Hey guys, I'm here in Palo Alto with Chuck Cook, and if you're an FSD beta tester, his name is in your Tesla, and you might be wondering why. That's exactly what we're gonna uncover in this video. All right, I'm joined by the Chuck Cook. <laughs> and some people, you know, might not really know who you are, but maybe they've seen your name in the FSD notes. So yeah, tell us a little bit about the Chuck Cook style turn and yeah. how this all came to be. It's kind of a funny story, you know. Um, I like to think everybody's famous for something and it's just kind of funny to be famous for this. But, um, so the Chuck Cook style turn is essentially the way Elon and Ashok's uh, AI team phrased a an unprotected left turn. An unprotected left turn is essentially a turn without a stoplight or any sort of controlling light uh, on a left turn. But what's unique about the, the turn that I've been focusing on, which is very close to where I live, so it's very easy for me to drive, is it's three lanes of what I would consider high-speed traffic, which the speed limit's about 50 miles an hour and the cars can go much faster than that. We'll just say 60 sometimes is very, very easy to happen. So the the, the Tesla has to kind of get into a position to pass an occlusion, which is a fence, and use the camera configuration it has to detect oncoming cars and look for gaps in order to jump across the first three lanes. And it learned in dot 69 how to go into the median at a slight angle, which they're calling a pose. And that pose is a little bit of a left-hand uh, turn so that it can more easily merge into the oncoming traffic from the right side of the road at the same speeds. And it's doing it again. Wow, it's actually crossing the yellow line in confusion. Um, okay. So the pose is the angle that the, the Tesla now goes when it's in the median. Uh, and it's only working right now on this version with a raised median. If you don't have a raised median, you're unfortunately not gonna get this behavior. So it kind of makes a little bit of a right turn then it kind of comes back to the left. So it's in a good position to merge very quickly into the oncoming traffic from the right hand side. So that pose is better than being at a 90 degree angle and having to do a full 90 degree turn in traffic. It really has made the number of these turns that are successful much higher because it's broken two complex problems uh, up. You know, instead of having to do both at once, it can now just try to cross the traffic um, from the first side, stop in the median, and then wait for the gap from the right side. So when it said in the release notes, you know, this you know, improves a Chuck Cook style turn, that's pretty much what it's talking about, is it's using the median to break a, a large high-speed um, crossing traffic problem into two different parts. Interesting. And so, like, when did you find out that you were actually going to be, like, your name kind of memorialized in these notes? Well, the first time I knew it was in the notes was when the first time uh, somebody sent me a, a leaked image from a, a test driver that was testing it, which was just a few weeks before it actually went live. They usually send the software out to employees a few days before the public gets it. And that's kind of when they start leaking on Twitter. And then there it was, you know. Um, the Chuck Cook style turn and you know going from knowing they were working on my turn because I was seeing drivers in the neighborhood actually focusing on it to being you know sort of put into the release notes uh, was was a whole nother level because obviously just the rain, name recognition everybody started saying who the heck is this Chuck guy kind of a yeah. thing and it just kind of got a little bit more comical because I don't know that's not kind of my personality to need that kind of attention I like working on problems and helping Tesla get better at some of these little issues and I think we were doing pretty good on that but then putting my name in there everybody uh, started coming to my neighborhood, driving the turn, bringing their cars up. A few people came from all over the place just to try it themselves. There, there's even some other stuff. The New York Times came uh, to Jacksonville. That article is not public yet. It is, uh, we did a full day of driving and uh, and everything with the uh, San Francisco um, artificial intelligence uh, section of the Times. So that probably be coming out in the next few weeks. And uh, of course, I don't know what it's gonna say or how it's gonna look, but I'm hoping it's yeah. all put in the right light, you know? Oh, yeah. But I think that it, just the attention it got kind of went exponential and of course it'll be fading there'll be a day where those release notes are no longer visible and, and we'll move on to something else so for those unfamiliar with your, vi your videos where exactly is that famous left turn that we're talking about here yeah so it's in Jacksonville Florida uh, it's on the west side of the St. John's River you know kind of uh, just north of the Navy uh, station the Naval Air Station there in Jacksonville the entry point is a two-lane road coming out of a neighborhood you know and up to a stop sign that crosses a six lane divided highway, which is the aggressiveness of this turn. In addition, there is a fence that partially obstructs the six lane divided highway depending on how close to the road you get. On the opposite side of the road, 
There are four yellow signs that are warning you the road does not continue. There's railroad tracks over there, so there's train tracks. So it's just kind of the indication that the road does not continue. And in the middle, and I'm not gonna walk out on the road, there is a divided highway median that is probably about 15 feet wide. It's not quite thick enough for a car to fit in perpendicular. You have to kind of hit it at an angle like most, most medians you do. But the intersection, if anyone else with FSD in the Jacksonville or Northeast Florida area, is Huntington and Roosevelt on the 4800 block of Roosevelt. Uh, I talk about it on several of my videos on, on YouTube. If you're interested in finding it, you know, you can, I even wrote a video about, you know, what is Chuck Cook's left turn? And I did some different angles with the GoPro so you can kind of see it from outside of the car um, if anybody's interested in, in, in looking that up. What made you like interested in, you know, capturing these test drives and also in the very unique way, like was anyone else using a drone? No, I think, well, I mean, obviously using drones is, is uh, just another camera, right? But with another perspective and just like, you know, you do for a living, you know, angles and perspectives, you get a, a different little insight into what's going on. And it's helpful, I think. Uh, and I had already owned a drone, so I didn't need to go buy one for this. But there's a funny little backstory on the drone thing. So early on, there were some folks that didn't... Um, like, you know, I guess you could say they were Tesla Q or they were just folks that were anti-Tesla, you know, reported me to the FAA for using drone footage on YouTube uh, without an FAA one part 107 operator's permit. So I actually got a call from the FAA and because I am a commercial airline pilot and hold a commercial uh, airline certificate, getting a call from the FAA is not something that you like uh, because you just, it's never good <laughs> when you get a call from the FAA. Yeah. But ultimately what it was, was the FAA does consider putting videos on YouTube as monetization and a professional career. And it is required to have a 107 operating certificate to operate a drone in any sort of professional manner. So the FAA and I worked it out and I effectively got the certification that was required in, in a few days and the FAA was like, thank you for doing that. It's more of an education campaign mm -hmm. to keep the, uh, the public aware of how to use drones safely and where they're used. Uh, and of course, I follow all the rules when I'm using it, but it's just another interesting little twist of, of using the drone. Yeah. But I originally got interested because I'm an engineer and I like to look at problems, you know, and, and rethink them and relive them, much like some people like to look at football games after the game and really pick apart the plays. That's kind of what my videos are to me. They're my, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking of a drive kind of a scenario. So I started uh, some other things, like uh, I got into the CAN bus on the car, so I tap into the vehicle bus um, and the chassis bus on the Model Y. I've got it running on uh, one of Josh Wardle's CAN servers and I extract all of the data from every one of the drives and then I take that data and I filter it and I do some visualization displays so I can not only see the video from the drone and inside the car, I can also see the sensor data from the car in real time so I can see the actual torques, the acceleration, I can see the autopilot state, I can see the, the jitter, I can see some of the uh, other variables that uh, those of you that are familiar with my videos uh, have come to know but that really helped me understand what was happening happening and I think to the viewers they could look at the parameters rather than just listen to my voice mm. so they can see the acceleration move versus me just going oh I feel it nudging up yeah, a little bit totally. and I think all of this additional data and this third person perspective from the drone got the attention of Tesla and the engineers here and I hope to meet them tonight and talk to them about it you know started looking at my videos as their own QA of their own software because they got additional data from another part of the country uh, that was detailed enough to perhaps even evaluate their own software so that's kind of how I got into it I think that's kind of how Tesla started paying attention to it because it was useful to them uh, and there are other folks out there putting out good YouTube videos with good critiques and scenarios that they get to watch but probably not with as much actual data is in my videos yeah so are you still doing it fairly regularly I've kind of you know now that the FSD beta group has grown so large I'm pretty good at doing releases when they're brand new and everyone has excitement about the new releases to see how they turn out and to put some initial first impressions out there uh, but this isn't my day job so I'm not out there trying to put a video out every day or every week just to keep you know uh, people engaged I'm just trying to provide content where it's useful so every release I try to do a specific set of drives I do a, a first impressions Memorial Park Drive, I do my unprotected left turns, I do an unmarked roads video, and occasionally I'll do like something one off, like there's a few nuances around double green lights and some things like that that I'm starting to experiment with. So I try to get that set done on each uh, release. Sometimes that can get done in a couple of days and sometimes I'll stretch it out over a week or so.